So hey guys, I am back with another video. If you don't want to see this hair tutorial, I will display the time marker on the screen for you to skip to. This hair was sent to me by Clean Virgin Remy Hair. They sent me four bundles of the closure of their Brazilian body wave texture. The longest length that I got was 28 inches and the bundles were really thick and full. I also got a 4x4 four four lace closure and I'm going to get right into constructing this wig unit. So I'm using the spandex dome style wig cap and these are my favorite ones to use, very stretchy. And and I'm just applying that onto my canvas head. I always use the 22 inch because this is the average size of most people's heads. So you're gonna also need a curved needle to start sewing and you're gonna flip your mannequin head over to the side and you're gonna start from the side. You're heading in a downward U and then you're gonna bring it back and flip your tracks as you go. Do not cut your webs until you get closer to the top. That way you prevent shedding and you make it nice and flat towards the top. So we're gonna be bleaching our lace closures. So first you're gonna need some 40 volume developer as well as some some Clairol BW2 toning powder so that your hair doesn't get that brassy reddish orange look and then you're also going to need some Clairol BW2 bleaching powder this is actually the powder lightener that's actually going to lighten up the knots itself so go ahead and get a bowl or something to place in the contents of everything and you're gonna go ahead and place in all of that so starting off with the toner then the bleach and then add in a little bit of Ford volume developer and you're gonna mix that up remember we're going for a toothpaste like consistency make it a little bit more thick than liquid so I just pinned down my closure onto my canvas head after I had already sold on a couple bundles and we're just gonna be applying this all over the area the lace closure area make sure you are fully saturating the entire lace closure because you don't want it to be half bleached half not bleached you want it to be full the reason why you bleach the knots is to give it a more natural look when you go to part the hair or place it against your forehead so I'm gonna let that sit for about 20 minutes and when I'm done I'll be washing that out so next I'm actually gonna be tinting the lace closure to give it an even more natural look so I just need some form of a bowl or again something that you can place in all of the contents and I'm going to be using the Adore Me and Sienna Brown hair dye as well as this random one that I found it's called Via Natural in the color China Moon so you're going to get some water make sure it's hot and go ahead and just dip in some of that hair dye in there and make sure you mix it up as well so the colors can blend so as you can see the lace closure is more yellowy the knots are bleached because they're more yellow toned so we're going to let that sit for another maybe 20-30 minutes and when you bring it out it's gonna look a little bit like this so now you can see that the knots are more of like a browner tone which is gonna match a lot more with our skin complexion that way you can get the lace that just melts right into your skin so this is it against my skin as you can see there it just looks a lot more natural than just having the closure just being bleached by the bleach so I'm just lining up where I want my closure to lay when I do side parts I definitely move it over to the side I put the edge of the closure where the middle would be and then I tilt it over and I pin down the lace closure all around the mannequin head so once that's done I've sold on everything and added the rest of the bundles I'm gonna go ahead and customize my lace closure with a side part I like to make it like deep and then curve it and I like to keep it in place by using water and mousse so I spray it down just to hold where I put my part and then I go ahead with my wrap mousse and I like to use the one that's from ORS the olive oil wrap mousse set this is the best and I'm just going to place that all around the parting area that way I know it stays where it's supposed to stay and this is right before I do any tweezing so just go ahead and press that down and then use a comb to kind of mold it as to where you want the closure and all the parting in the hair to lay so just taking some tweezers I'm gonna go ahead and customize the actual parting of the closure I went for like a little curve to the back because I don't know it just looks a lot neater and I like it because it looks a lot deeper and I'm just gonna be tweezing and plucking out those parts in between the closure I went ahead and tied it down with a little scarf and then I removed it after letting it sit for about a night so just making sure that my baby hairs look the way how I want it to look next we are moving on to styling so I'm taking a curling wand this is a cheap one it's Remington get it from dollar store or Walmart and I'm gonna go ahead and start to style my hair now before we get started with styling the hair I want to shape the hair so I have this razor comb I know the razor comb looks a little bit old and musty and crusty but you know I'm gonna get it together I washed it off right before I did this so I'm just taking the front bang and I'm just going to be trimming it it is a razor so be very careful you don't want to take off too much if you're not experienced I would start really low and then work your way 
way up. And then I'm gonna take my curling wand and I'm going to just wand curl the entire head. Now this was probably the longest part apart from sewing the actual bundles onto the wig cap, but it was definitely worthwhile because the style ended up looking really good. So to hold it, I used the Got To Be Glued Free Spray and I just put it around the curls and I kind of shaped the curls how I want it to lay. And it's a really good tool to use if you want your curls to sit at a certain point on your face. Next, I just kind of just showed the whole wig and I used a wide tooth comb to kind of just brush out everything, be very gentle. You don't want to ruin your work. And when I was done, I went ahead and applied the wig and just let it sit on there. Now my parting space wasn't the best to me. I feel like I could have done better. I'm definitely going to rework that. But yeah, this is what the wig looked like when it was all said and done. I love the curls, love the waves, thought it looked really nice. It was really long. Haven't done a side part style like this where it's really long in a while. So it reminded me of like my high school years because this used to be my high school style for sure. And this is what it all looked like. So what do you guys think? If you're interested in buying this hair, please check the description box down below for the hair to Queen Virgin Remy. And we can get right into this video. Hi guys, I'm back with another video. So today's video is yet again another Chama Chats video. Nigga, pay a so we are back with another video recently i just so happened to be doing my usual sunday night chilling you know getting ready for the week because yes i don't clock into work but i still set aside time every week to actually go to work which is filming planning you know social media stuff all that type of stuff so i just happened to flip on my channel and i seen the kardashians came on i'm like you know what we finna watch the kardashians because it's been a long weekend we might as well just chill relax most of my shows for the summer are dead and gone you feel me games people play on tuesdays on bet that was my she. And so I decided to watch the Kardashians. And I realized what they were doing is they used like their season finale. It was a two part episode basically describing how the Kardashians found out, reacted to, and basically went about the whole Jordan and Tristan situation scandal, if you want to call it that. And I am legitimately not flabbergasted, not shocked, not appalled. I'm actually disappointed in the entire situation because I don't think it really serves as a good representation for the Kardashians because I feel like it just made them even more hypocritical. So we're going to talk about the entire episodes and how I feel. I've broken my video down into seven main talking points, so let's get right into this video. Point number one is that Jordan has already opened up about what she has done and has already apologized. I made a video about this months ago when it first kind of came out, and this is like when it first, first came out, before they even had anything to say. Like, I didn't touch on, like, the petty things that they were doing in the aftermath and, you know, all of that, the whole interview with Red Table Talks. I didn't think I really talked about that, but I did just talk about the basis of what happened. And what I found weird about the episode is that they just kept saying, like, she never called me to apologize. Like, Jordan's never apologized to me. She definitely was remorseful and very sorry for what she has done and I just can't bring it within me to believe that someone did something of this magnitude which I don't really think what she did was that serious unpopular opinion but she did what she did and you mean to tell me that she never said sorry like I just don't believe that that narrative is factual because there's no way that this happened the way that it did and she has yet to even just say Chloe I'm sorry like those three words like there's no way that she never said that in my opinion I feel like because she's been so humiliated and so distressed about the whole situation that it's weird to me that they kept saying that she never apologized and they kind of made her look like she was weak or scared to approach Chloe which I mean in a situation like that you guys immediately started bullying her you guys immediately started going on social media and doing all of those things and by you guys I mean the Kardashians so she probably felt very reluctant to come and say something directly to the person who she hurt and you know really come clean about it but she did go through other methods other ways and other levels of getting to her message to Chloe now do I agree with that no but I genuinely think that's some point she had to apologize but I don't think that she didn't say sorry if she didn't that's that's kind of wrong but I can kind of see why she didn't after the way how they acted following the whole entire scandal point number two Chloe why did you ever blame Jordan? Let alone, I feel like she still probably blames Jordan. She blatantly accused her of being the reason why their family broke up. And I don't understand that because this was not Tristan's first infraction. You know, he had did things months ago. Damn near almost a year ago, he did things. And God only knows what he has been doing that he hasn't been caught for. You know, because a lot of times when a guy cheats, you find out about only one incident. Okay. There's usually many other times when he does certain things that you just never find out. Or you find out months and months and months later. But 
I don't understand why she's blaming Jordan for her family being broken up when you were able to accept him back into your life after he cheated on you with groupies. You know what I'm saying? With girls who do this stuff just to do this stuff. He cheated on you with girls who don't even care about him or you. And with that, Chloe has never ever publicly checked Tristan. Um, I really don't understand why and how because if you can put this much energy towards the girl who did something to you, even though it was your man that stepped out on you, she was not in a relationship with you. I mean, to an extent, yes, but like technically she wasn't. Let alone the fact that he was the one that even came on to her. Why did you never ever publicly check Tristan? And I know what you're saying. Oh, I have a child involved and I don't want this to come back up years and years later. But those are all factors that Chloe should have considered before she ever said anything. And one thing I don't understand is how these women know that they're on camera, they're being filmed. And yes, they are executive producers of their own show, so they can and decide what gets edited in and out but you know that things that you say are gonna go on social media and the fact that you didn't prevent your image at all like they were so worried about image but they did not protect their image whatsoever i understand they want to be raw unfiltered and relatable which they whatever but at the end of the day you guys know what you guys allowed to be aired on tv and i find it very weird and hypocritical that you could publicly check jordan so many times but then never ever 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 say anything about tristan other than a low-key kind of defending him and i also find it weird that in the red table talks interview that jordan said that chloe and tristan were already broken up so i see why chloe is mad obviously you know you're gonna be hurt with that situation but i still don't understand how is someone this upset over a kiss now, everyone has their own levels and definitions of cheating. I personally think if you kiss another person, yes, that is cheating because you did something that was defined as intimate with somebody that you're not in a relationship with. But I would never hold kissing someone to the same standard as sexually penetrating another individual. I don't know, you guys let me know what you think about that. Like, I'm really sitting here like all of this happened over a kiss. Like a kiss. Maybe it was just because of the people who were involved that makes her feel so much more betrayed, which I completely understand. I'm not defending what happened and what they did. But I'm just really confused at how all of this outrage is over a kiss. Make it make sense. Again, I don't understand how her family is now ruined over Jordan and Tristan pecking or kissing or whatever. Meanwhile, your family was never over when he was dealing with groupies about a year ago. I mean, come on. I, 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 I'm trying to make it make sense. I never will understand the energy of a woman when she gets cheated on and why it always goes towards the woman, the other woman, and never towards the man. Like, I've never been that type of person to trust me. I've been cheated on and my energy never went towards a girl unless she knew about me, then that's different. But I never understand how women can allocate their energy of anger, aggression, or whatever it may be, hatred towards a woman and never ever check their man. And in this case scenario, I understand the fact that they have a child, but I just, nonetheless, your energy should not be that much more on Jordan than it is Tristan and that's exactly what was played out on social media and on their show and she cannot once say that oh yeah I checked Tristan behind closed doors because that's exactly what you should have done for Jordan make sure that energy is really equal everywhere point number three all the Kardashians, except Courtney, have stolen their friend's man. Now, I already talked about this in my past video, but let me go ahead and give it to you guys one more time, just in case you didn't remember. Chloe, you did this with Trina and French Montana, and Trina didn't even find out by you or anybody. She found out through social media. You've done this before, so when it happens to you, you can be upset, you can be sad, but you cannot be surprised, okay? Because when I tell you, karma doesn't have to hit in a day, a month, a week, a year, whatever it may be. It will always hit you. When you think everything's going well for you, you, that's when karma comes back. Also, Chloe used to be friends with Lauren London, who was at one point dating Trey Songs, in which she started messing around with Trey Songs. So you did this to two of your friends who were very close with you, and then you get mad when someone does this to you. Like you gotta know that you reap what you sow, and everything comes around. Like what goes around comes around. Kylie, Kylie was over here messing with Tyga, underage, if I may add. And Kylie is literally the same age as me. Our birthdays are like three weeks apart. Ninety-seven born, and. You were doing the same thing and China was very good friends with Kim Kardashian because I remember following them on Twitter like way back in the day like 2013, 14 I believe it was around that time and Kim and China were very close friends and then you end up messing with your sister's friends baby daddy slash fiance like and you're underage at that and you saw nothing wrong none of her sisters checked her nobody told her Kylie don't do that either one wait until they break up two wait until you're older or three don't do that all it's wrong nobody batted an eye and none of them thought it was wrong okay like they were very much okay with Kylie dating Tyga underage if I may add again I don't even have to give Kim's example but let's not forget Kanye West and Amber Rose were dating and they had been dating and everybody knew that they were an item and then all of a sudden Kim was cheating on her husband with Kanye Kanye, as well as Kanye was cheating on Amber Rose 
with Kim and now they're married and have kids and all of that stuff like this is things that you guys were doing for the longest like you all have done the same thing so when it happens to your family do not make it look like you guys are so untouchable or so perfect or so free of sin and free of wrongdoing when you have done these same things to other women like I don't want to say now you know how it feels but low-key now you know how it feels I feel like a lot of times the family always tries to play the victim when things happen to them and I understand protecting their image and trying to be the sweet white girls and you know nobody wants to hate but you guys have to own your stuff too like if they would have came out and been like you know what you guys are right this is what I did and I was wrong for this and now it's happening to me looks like I just have to just eat it up and move on with my life it is what it is I feel like they would have respected the hell out of Chloe if Chloe would have taken that approach and not pointing the finger and blaming everybody you took back a cheater he's bound to cheat again I've been there I've been that stupid I've been that you know dumb girl I've taken back a cheater and guess what he's done the same thing again and the second time it's always is going to be worse so you have to take that in mind when you go back with your cheating boyfriend or girlfriend whomever it may be point number four i wanted to point out that i feel like the kardashians genuinely think that they are above and beyond black women jordan once is a black woman and all of their closest friends for the most part are usually black women being that kylie's best friend was jordan chloe's best friend is malika who is also a black woman and i find it weird that i genuinely think that they think they're above and beyond black women which made them even more offended than what they would have been had it been you know like another white woman from around the area in Hollywood and Calabasas and all of that. It seems to me that they get super duper offended when they know that their black men will revert to a black woman because they think they're the upper echelon of women and think that they just are untouchable. And it's kind of weird that they really assume this position as if they are the top women of a hierarchy of the area that they're in or the status that they're in. And that's just wrong because no. <laughs> because no. I can respect the Kardashians to an extent, but we're not about to sit there and act like they're holier than thou. Jordan literally was like Kylie Jenner's shadow. She literally had no identity because Kylie placed her in that position. Kylie offered, I repeat, offered to pay for Jordan to live in with her, to travel with her, to be everywhere with her. But for whatever reason, they were perpetuating this narrative as if Jordan really didn't have anything. As if she had just came from nothing, like she was some girl from the hoods of LA that never had anything. Like that's just dead wrong. Kylie then said, I'm like scared of you now referencing Jordan and to me that was just ridiculous because you literally have done the same thing like Kylie did the same thing to her friend Justine Sky, who was rumored let alone not rumored was basically dating Travis Scott who she's now her baby daddy like what? What do you mean you're scared of your friend? And then apparently there were rumors swirling around saying that Kylie was inquiring to Travis, asking if Jordan had ever made a move on him. Like, I understand dotting your I's, crossing your T's, I get that. But stop acting like she's just so capable of doing such horrendous and treacherous things to your man. Cause let's be real, Travis Scott is really not cute. So nobody really wants him anyway. But I'm just saying like, that that's for you. And in this situation, did she kiss on Tristan or did Tristan kiss on her? Yes, but it was after Chloe and Tristan had since been broken up. Not saying that that's an excuse, but I'm just saying, and I'm just saying. Also, Malika is an ass kisser because I don't understand why there's black women, let alone anybody, that will sit here and ride up under the butts of the Kardashians, the big plastic fake butts of the Kardashians, and kiss their ass and just do everything that they say in the order that they want it and act and be just like them. You're wondering why they like stomp on you or think less than you. Like Malika literally just follows Chloe around and I understand that's your best friend. I can't take away that dynamic between the two of you, but it's just it's weird how hard she goes for her friend and it doesn't seem like Malika really focuses on anything herself like everything that she's done that's really successful except for ATL the movie which was back in like 2006 so we're talking like 12 13 years ago has literally just been Khloe Kardashian and collaborating with her to even get her name out like she literally is put in the upper echelon of men lifestyle cars clubs traveling whatever you name it because of who she's associated to because of her friend if the Kardashians were who they were like 10 years ago Malika would have kicked rocks and been moved on like I don't believe that Malika and all the other black friends that they have that literally ride up under them would stick around if it wasn't for who they are and what they have and that's really sad because we're in an era that we want to establish ourselves as black people meanwhile you have some black people not all but some and definitely not most but some who find it okay to just literally ride up under the type of women that are of another race who aren't allies to the black community let alone black women and who will sit here and be culture vultures steal and appropriate everything from black culture make it make sense point number five 
the fat shaming. So I wanted to touch on, there was like a little outrage about what Chloe said, like calling her a big fat liar. And people equated that to Chloe basically talking about Jordan's weight. We all know that Jordan was more of a heavy set person and she's since slimmed down. Whether it's naturally or not, I don't know. I think it's natural, but I could be wrong because it is Hollywood and they do a lot of things out there. Everyone used to say that Chloe was the fat sister out of everybody and that she had issues with her weight and obviously she's gone under the knife and did whatever Hollywood people do. Holly weird. Now this, you know, tooth shaped, you know, wisdom tooth shaped woman. It is what it is. And people were coming for Chloe saying that, oh, how could you dare fat shame somebody when you used to be fat yourself? Now, where I do have to call BS is that I feel like there was nothing wrong with what she said because the phrase big fat liar is an actual phrase. And even if she was equating it to her shape, her size, just based off of the nature of the situation, if I was in Chloe's shoes, Jordan would have been more than a fat girl. You know, she would have been every name under the book. When you're in that type of emotion or that rage or, you know, whatever it may be, all bets are off. I don't owe you respect or loyalty because you didn't give that to me. So I don't feel that she was wrong for saying what she said. She could have said a lot worse and probably did, but I feel like she could have been a lot worse more things like my mouth is reckless okay so jordan would have caught way worse than that i would have caught her everything but she would have got caught that you feel me there would have been that plus more so i don't think it was wrong to be mad at chloe for using that because in the nature of the situation i can't fault her for being human and having emotions and being upset like i just can't point number six i genuinely believe that jordan woods is way better off without the kardashians and she may not notice that or may have not noticed it when everything first happened but she has gotten way more brand deals sponsorships collabs in terms of influence, followers, money, notoriety, fame, ever since this scandal happened and ever since that she's detached herself away from that family. I know that she's heard that she lost friends, obviously who wouldn't be, but she has literally glown up financially, emotionally, monetarily, and all cylinders of life. Like within all cylinders of life, she has glown up. This girl went from like nobody really cared about her, she was like a side Kylie's best friend, and now she gets followed by the paparazzi. Not saying that's a good thing, but it is I guess to say a boost to her status as a celebrity. And I find it weird how they were so quick to disown her. And I can admire that the family does stick together. Like I can I can admire that, you know, they're stick together loyalty and all that stuff. But they're not gonna be unloyal or disloyal to their friends and then expect the same thing to be reciprocated when you've done, all of them have done the same thing to other people, but then they want it to be done to them. It doesn't work that way. We, we not about to kiss your ass like that. And the main thing that I wanted to touch on is that she was always rich. She was rich from birth. Her dad used to work on a set of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, which is how she knows Jada Pinkett and Will Smith and all that whole entire family. She's always been involved in anything Hollywood and all those stuff. Like, she's been set before the Kardashians, or even the Kardashians. Like, before they had money, Jordan Woods and her family had money. Her mom is a PR person in Hollywood. She's probably managed a whole bunch of famous people. Her dad has money. Like, she's been set. Like, when they were kept saying, like, oh, you know, Kylie's friend got to sit around on this golden throne and blah, 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 blah. Just like, shut up. Because if it wasn't for your sister down on her knees y'all wouldn't be anything okay so this girl was born into it you guys had to go and do extraneous activities to even get to where you are and i say i'm not knocking the hustle but let's be real with ourselves so please put some damn respect on her upbringing the seventh and final point that i wanted to say is that at the end of the day whether chloe's wrong or jordan's wrong or tristan whomever these are all real people and i think a lot of times people forget to realize that these are all real humans there's nothing about chloe kardashian that is better than anybody else on earth and once you stop holding these people to such a high level and I mean you can have your faves you can have your role models you can have the people that you love to follow the people whose lives that you like to keep up with I'm not saying don't once you start holding them to a level in which you think that this person is better than you and that you have to do so much to get to that level or to be that person that's why their heads are so big and their noses are up to the sky and they think that they can get away with the things that they do at the end of the day everybody involved in the situation is a human being and I'm not gonna sit up here and bash somebody for having emotions and the way how they lashed out because in the heat of the moment I'm not in her situation so I don't know what I would do if it's me I feel like she went about it wrong and I'm pretty sure in retrospect she knows that you know hindsight is 2020 but people need to stop acting like the Kardashians aren't just regular people like they might not be regular in money regular in status regular in fame and regular in lifestyle but they're a human being nonetheless they bleed red just like us they have two eyes a heart you know all those things that most human almost every human has like there's no way that you can keep holding these people to this level and then shitting on yourself when you're not them like that doesn't make any sense like at all please remember that these are still human beings and whether that means refraining yourself from saying certain things on the internet or just holding people to a certain level you need to remember that these are human beings at the end of the day so that is all that i have for my video i hope you guys enjoyed one more plug that i have you guys know i'm doing my african fashion line so my sister made this crop top the other day 
I know it's just this basic crop top that she made this was her first one and I taught her how to make it so make sure you guys are following our African fashion line which is shop motherland materials on Instagram please go follow and support us you know a simple follow is really all we would love you know we're gonna be dropping some merch at the end of this summer into September and I can't wait for you guys to see it also make sure you guys are following me on all my social media networks and I'll see you guys in my next video bye guys